Hi, I'm Dave Forsyth, and this is episode 13 of our video series, Avid Tips and Techniques. At some point, you've probably used still graphics in a production. Now, importing stills into Media Composer and using them in the timeline is easy enough. But have you ever had the director say, well, that's great, but can we just zoom the image up a bit? Well, let's see what happens when you do that. I have here a graphic of a satellite map of the world, which I imported into Media Composer. I will now place a 3D warp effect on it and start zooming in. Once we get around to 120%, the image really starts falling apart. Although we can zoom in quite a long way, the result isn't really usable. So why is that? Well, even though the original graphic was 8,000 pixels wide and 4,000 pixels high, when Media Composer imported it, it resized it to the current frame size, in this case 720 by 576. Now obviously at that size, it doesn't take much zooming in to lose a lot of detail. In the image category of the effect palette, there is a plugin called Avid Pan and Zoom. This plugin has been designed to allow you to zoom into and pan around the original graphic file. This is how it works. First, import the graphic you want. Now this is just going to be a placeholder in the sequence. Next, mark up the duration of the graphic that you want. and get it into the timeline. Now open the effect palette and drag the Avid Pan and Zoom plugin onto the imported graphic in the timeline. But now the screen's gone black. What's happened? Well, the reason is the plugin is now looking for the original graphic file but we haven't yet told the plugin where that graphic file is, so the screen's black, at least for now. So let's tell the plugin where to find the original graphic. Click on the Other Options button and this dialog box will open. Navigate to the file and click Open. The Effect Preview window will now show the original graphic file. In this case, the image doesn't fully fit the screen. That's because the aspect ratio of this graphic is not 4x3. But that's okay, because we're going to zoom in and pan around it anyway. Using the zoom factor slider, I can start zooming into the image. Now there are two modes, source and target. In source mode, you get a full raster and a safe action guide. This mode allows you to see what you are zooming into relative to the image as a whole. Target mode, on the other hand, shows you the final result. Now don't worry about the image quality straight away. The effect preview window is just showing us a preview. The ultimate image quality will be much better. You can also add keyframes to the motion. So I'm going to start off with the first keyframe at full size. About two seconds later, I'm going to zoom into Australia, so I need to jump ahead two seconds, add a keyframe, and set my zoom and positional values. Now like most other effects, I can drag the slider, or select the slider and type in a specific value if I know exactly what I want. Now once the keyframes are in place, you can preview the move. You can see how the keyframes are changing my zoom level and the center of my point of interest. Once I'm happy with them, I can set the quality level in the filter hamburger menu. You can see that there are several options available. Real time renders very quickly, but the quality is not great. Triangle results in fairly soft images. Quadratic 
produces a slightly sharper image. Cubic produces a still sharper image. B-spline catmull, yes it's a tragic name isn't it, but B-spline catmull produces a slightly sharper image than cubic if the zoom level is high. Gaussian is a little softer but quite pleasing to the eye. It's a nice compromise between render time and image quality. Avid high qual results in very sharp images, but it does take about three times the render time of the previous methods. And Avid ultra qual is the best quality of all, but it takes about ten times as long to render as the lower quality methods, but definitely worth the wait. I'm going to choose Avid ultra qual for this example. Because the system may struggle to play this effect in real time, I'll render it. OK, now that it's rendered, let's have a look at the final result. The Avid Pan and Zoom effect is covered in the new 5-day MC101 Editing with Avid Media Composer course, or the old MC110 Introduction to Media Composer Effects. For more information about these courses and the other courses that we offer, please visit www.avap.com.au forward slash training. Or you could drop me a line at dforsyth at ambertech.com.au. So, how big an image can you use? Well, the truth is, I don't know. But I have managed to successfully use the Avid Pan and Zoom plugin on a graphic that was 15,000 pixels square. Now that's about eight times the width of an HD frame. That's a big picture. So until next time, I'm Dave Forsyth. Cheers for now.